Hi everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilovepathology.com and another active learning platform called Visdolia. And via Visdolia, you have the practice questions available on this video, like the one what you see here. In the practice session, you will have multiple choice questions, you will have single answer questions and also the case scenarios. And the best part of Visdolia is that you do get personalized feedback as in this case you know it correctly identified what went wrong it correctly identified that the response given was wrong so after you complete watching the video just click on the practice session and enjoy learning so in continuation with the immunopathology uh, series this is the part six of disease of immune system where we will be discussing about type 3 hypersensitivity we will try to understand the mechanism or pathogenesis of type 3 hypersensitivity along with some examples so we know that hypersensitivity reactions are classified into type 1, type 2, type 3 and type 4. Type 1 and 2 I have already covered. This is what we will be discussing today. So what is this type 3 hypersensitivity? So this is also referred to as immune complex hypersensitivity where this is, uh, this is an immune response mechanism which involves the formation of immune complexes. So when I say immune complexes, which means antigen antibody complex. And this immune complex is formed usually in the circulation, right? So, remember that the antigens are free-floating or soluble antigens. Unlike in type 2 hypersensitivity where we saw the antigens were not soluble antigens. They were on the cell surfaces or tissue. Whereas in this case, that is type 3 hypersensitivity, it's all about free-floating or soluble antigens. So, what happens when there is antigen antibody complex? It is deposited in the blood vessels and then there is activation of complement which leads to inflammation and injury. Just like what we saw in antibody mediated you know, hypersensitivity, the outcome is the same. The outcome is inflammation and injury, right? Very rarely, the immune complexes are formed where the antigen are planted. So, when I say antigen are planted, which means they could be either fixed or deposited on particular surface. And then there is a formation of in situ immune complex. The outcome is the same, right? The outcome is inflammation and injury. This kind of hypersensitivity reaction we see in some glomerulonephritis. So, let us see what are all the sources of antigens. Antigens can be either exogenous or endogenous. Exogenous, it could be any foreign protein. For example, diphtheria antioxin, where it is horse anti-thymoside globally. Or in case of endogenous, it could be any self component. And the most common example given is nucleoproteins, which is implicated in systemic lupus erythematosus. And the antibodies against these antigens are usually complement fixing antibodies and they could be either IgG or IgM and are very rarely IgA antibodies. Type 3 hypersensitivity, usually they are systemic reactions and there is a preferential deposition and associated inflammation in kidneys, joints and small blood vessels because they have a very unique physiological, anatomical and biochemical characteristics which I am going to talk about it a bit later. So, if it is involving the kidney, it's glomerulonephritis. Likewise, it could be arthritis and vasculitis. So, though it is systemic, it can be local immune complex disease as well. So, type 3 hypersensitivity reactions are broadly categorized into systemic immune complex disease and local immune complex disease. Systemic immune complex disease, the prototype is serum sickness, which further can be categorized into acute or chronic. When I say acute serum sickness, which means whenever there is an exposure to a very large amount of antigen, then there is an entity called acute serum sickness. Whereas chronic serum sickness means the exposure of an antigen is repeated or prolonged. Common example is systemic lupus erythematosus. You know, the name serum sickness comes from the historical association with patients who received antiserum derived from horses to combat infections like diphtheria or tetanus. You know? and, and these antiserums which were given to these patients contained foreign proteins and that acted as antigens leading on to immune response. And usually, you know, the serum sickness manifestations include fever, rashes, arthritis, swollen lymph nodes and edema. The second important one is localized immune complex disease which is also referred to as Arthas reaction. This is named after 
Nicolas Maurice Arthus, who was a French immunologist and physiologist, who actually described the phenomenon way back in 1903. You know, he observed this reaction after he injected horse serum into rabbits that had been previously sensitized to it. Right. So this was the reaction. And what was it? What was the reaction? He saw that there was a localized area of tissue necrosis, which is due to you know immune complex vasculitis. That is acute immune complex vasculitis. So this is Arthur's reaction. It's almost always experimental, and that is serum sickness. And the most common example which we are going to learn is systemic lupus erythematosus. So now, now let us understand the pathogenesis of type three hypersensitivity. The first and the foremost thing you need to know is formation of immune complexes. And once formed, it has to be deposited. And finally, once deposited, it should result in inflammation and issue injury. Okay. So that's a sequential step formation, deposition, and leading on to inflammation and issue injury. So let's assume that this is a blood vessel and that is an antigen. So upon exposure to a particular antigen, you know. The B lymphocytes are programmed to get converted into plasma cells, and then you have plasma cells which synthesize lots and lots of antibodies to this particular antigen. Now, imagine a scenario where this individual is exposed to lots and lots of antigen. Then, some of these antigens, or many of these antigens, can be freely floating or soluble antigen which is circulating in the blood. And these free floating antigen react with the antibodies which were already produced. And then there is a formation of antigen antibody complexes or immune complexes. So, this immune complex will be in circulation. At some point of time, these immune complexes will have to deposit. So, what are the kind of immune complexes which are most pathogenic? And I mean, what are the kind of immune complexes which are deposited most? These are the immune complexes which is which are of medium size. They are most pathogenic. Now we know that immune complexes are deposited. So we need to know what are the sites where immune complexes are concentrated or deposited. And the sites include organs where blood is filtered at high pressure to form other fluids. For example, you know, kidney, which is having blood filtered at high pressure to form urine, joints forming synovial fluid. So these are the two most common organs where you know the immune complexes can be concentrated, leading on to glomerulonephritis and arthritis. So now that we know that there is a deposition of immune complex, and once the immune complexes are deposited in a given site, could be either glomeruli or it could be in the joint space or it could be just a vessel wall, then there is elicitation of inflammatory reaction, right? More and more neutrophil come towards the site of immune complex deposition. And then they bind to those antibodies, which leads on to activation of complement system. Okay, so lot, lots and lots of complements are seen there, and subsequently leading on to complement mediated issue damage. So this is what happens finally. The vessel wall is damaged. I hope you have understood this concept, right? So uh, there is a formation of immune complexes in the circulation against these free floating or soluble antigens. Then there is deposition in those particular sites and finally there is inflammation and tissue injury which is complement mediated. Now we need to know what is the role of complement tissue in the tissue injury. Is there any evidence to say that the complements are implicated in the tissue injury? Yes, complement proteins can be detected at the site of injury. Also you can if you measure the serum levels of C3 it will be decreased. You know, in the very active stage of disease, there is decrease in the serum levels of C3 and that is because of consumption of complement, you know. And this decrease in serum levels of C3 can be used to monitor disease activity as well. So, what is the morphology of type 3 hypersensitivity reaction? So, what happens to the blood vessel? Usually, the most important manifestation is the acute vasculitis where there is neutrophil infiltration in the walls of these blood vessels along with the necrosis of the vessel wall. And this necrosis combining with the deposits of the immune complexes and the complement and the plasma protein leads on to form something called fibrinoid necrosis. And that fibrinoid necrosis is smudgy eosinophilic area of tissue destruction. That's a very 
brightly eosinophilic tissue okay this is a kind of necrosis which is very brightly eosinophilic and fibroid necrosis is very characteristic of immune complex mediated vessel wall injury if it is involved in the glomerulus if you do an immunofluorescent microscopy on these you know tissues you can see the granular deposit now let us see some more examples of type 3 hypersensitivity reactions first and the foremost important is systemic lupus erythematosus the antigen involved in this case is nuclear antigen and the clinical features are nephritis skin lesions arthritis and various other manifestations post streptococcal glomerulonephritis the antigen involved here is streptococcal cell wall antigen you know they can be planted you know on the glomerular membrane basement membrane so the clinical features predominantly nephritis polyarteritis nodosa where the antigen is usually hepatitis b virus antigen which results in systemic vasculitis lastly reactive arthritis where the antigens are could be you know the bacterial antigens for example ersenia and the manifestation is acute arthritis after the bacterial infection so that is type 3 hypersensitivity reaction we have many more examples but then these are the most important ones we will discuss each of these in my subsequent videos so that's all about type 3 hypersensitivity we discussed in detail about the mechanism of type 3 hypersensitivity along with some examples thank you for watching if you have liked this video hit the like button do comment don't forget to subscribe and please do share if you find this video useful and don't forget to click on the practice session below in the link in pinned comment thank you